Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and my apologies, they've been late in coming recently simply because I have been reading some really hefty books of late that just have taken up my time. But recently I read a book by the name of Perfume, the story of a murderer by Patrick Suskind, who is a German author that no one knows much about because he's utterly a recluse. No one knows anything about him. He doesn't have any photos, doesn't do interviews, he doesn't rock up to awards, ser nothing, nothing. Really interesting. But he's written this great novel about, uh, I'll show you, I'll tell you what it's about. It's written this great novel, but like I said, it's my second reading. The first time I read this book, I loved it. I loved it because the words and how it was written was actually quite evocative. If 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 there was smell of vision in a book, it would be this. So the way he's written the scenes of the book are just brilliant because you can get a sense of the aroma, the scents and the smells that happen through each of the I guess the scenes and the stories in this book but like I said at second reading though completely different and I don't know why this is the case but in my second reading of the book I was actually quite aboard with the themes um, that were quite perverse in some ways and disgusted with all the characters in here none of whom had any redeeming features they were kind of good and bad they showed their two faces except for Grinwell now Grinwell was the main character as I mentioned and we get to see his story of how he grows up and how he works in different places but he's someone who seems to be behind society he's not in society he is a quiet presence simply because he doesn't have a smell and he seems to move about in crowds quite secretly because people really can't smell him there they can't see him he's actually a no one in in crowds but he has at the same time this feeling of superiority or feeling of power over everyone else and he's disgusted with humanity he hates this smell he hates the way humans work and live and he, he, he wants nothing to do with them and so I think this story is really about his own journey of trying to find himself in this place in the world where he's disgusted with humanity and yet he feels he needs to be compelled to be in it. But if he's in it, he wants to have the power to control it. And so there's a point in this book where he gets so disgusted with humanity, doesn't want anything to do with it. And so he retreats into an underground hovel very far away where he has no smells. He, he, he cannot smell anything. And in his own world for seven years, he creates his own worlds with smells and so forth. But he realizes he needs to get back into the world he needs to get out into humanity again. And so he gets out and he goes back into the big city with the wafts of smells and aromas and all the disgusting things of humanity that hits him. But he comes across a wafting, innocent smell. And that wafting innocence that he smelt was young virgins, young preteen girls that he would want to somehow capture that smell and create some kind of perfume now before all this happened throughout this he did work with perfumery people who were perfumers who created perfumes and his skill of creating a perfume far superseded their ones and so his intention was to kill the innocent young women capture their smell in some sort and through this smell then be able to control humanity or control the situation or whatever anyway i'm not going to talk about the last two scenes which were very bizarre in the book but what happens is he does get captured by the police he does get captured as the murderer because he sends all of paris into a spin as to who is creating who is murdering all these young women he had killed 24 young women just for their scent 
and he creates this very special scent and at the time that he's tried something happens with this scent and as i read this book i thought what the hell is going on here how could it have turned to something like this and then even more so when he when he escapes that situation and he gets himself into another situation again i cannot say what these two situations are because it'll blow your mind so when i was reading this book the second time round, i thought the themes here are not as eh, innocent as i first thought the first reading where i loved the smells and the aromas and he it evoked all these situations in my head about how Paris would have been like and how the perfumes would have smelt and, you know, the smell of peaches and so forth. No, second time round, I was actually disgusted by the characters, especially Grenwell in this book, because it was a abhorrent character. He wanted to be part of life and yet he wanted to be in life and control life and become powerful. So even though he hankered for invisibility, he, if he wasn't for the invisibility, he wanted to be part of life and then control the people. So that in itself, I thought, mm, that's power. That's not actually, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. The other thing is, as I kept reading this book, I thought, man, I keep getting images of the book of J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, where he too was somehow trying to capture innocence in some way. Um, the belief that young people are untainted or unmarred by the pressures of adulthood or the cynicism of life. And it, it had elements of this, which is really surprising that J.D. Salinger was also a well-known recluse same as Patrick Suskind, and you've got to wonder about these themes of being able to capture innocence in some way, that innocence is the be-all and end-all, but at the same time, wanting this power. Anyway, that's just my reading of it. So the second time round of Perfume for me was a little bit hard going, simply because I couldn't find any redeeming character characteristics of the uh, characters in this book, certainly of the protagonist Grinwill, who I just despised. The, the, the words around the aromas and scents didn't make any much of an impact this time around. I was actually angry and disgusted with Grinwill, but at the same time could understand elements of what he was doing. And I have to wonder whether my second reading of this book was really as an outcome of being now, I've lost track of what, 210 plus days in lockdown of being inside this house and of also being angry at the world myself, at, angry at our politicians, angry at the people who are the anti-vaxxers or the conspiracy theorists, the ones, the protesters who are trying to keep us even further into our homes. So at some point, I was becoming Grinwill. I was disgusted with humanity. At the same time, I also wanted to retreat in, in my home and not have to deal with the shit that was going on out there. So it's been a really interesting second time reading of this book. Will I read it a third time? Maybe in the future, who knows? Maybe the third time round, I would have a completely different reading of it. But this time round in lockdown, when I too have been marred by what is happening out there, I felt something very different with this book. So there you go. Perfume, the story of a murderer by Patrick Suskind. If you have read this book, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be very, very interesting. I think it's been a book that you either love it or you hate it. Like I said, the first reading, I loved it. Second time reading, not so much simply because of the themes that were in there. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for listening and watching. Bye for now.